Oh, many wonder if there is life somewhere out there, but what if there were, and in fact the universe was teeming with other races? Marshall V. N. Summers believes so and has written a book about it describing his vision. It's called The Reality and Spirituality of Life in the Universe, and he's on the line. Good afternoon, Marshall. Hello. Uh, could you start by telling us when you got uh, some sort of inkling that we weren't alone? Well, this awareness has been with me actually for a long time. And for the last 30 years, I've been in the process of receiving a revelation, part of which deals with the reality of intelligent life in the universe and the visitation that is occurring to our world. And part of this revelation has been growing over the recent years, particularly and culminating in the book Life in the Universe, which deals both with the reality and the spirituality of life in our local universe. So for what I what has been revealed to me, it appears that we're emerging into a much larger neighborhood of life of which we know nothing at all, and that we need to be prepared for that because that'll have a great deal to do with the future of our world and the well-being and future of everyone on Earth today the and in, in the future. The, the information that you've been receiving, Marshall, who have you been receiving it from? I consider that the revelation that has really consumed my life for the last 30 years is a new message from God. It is a revelation that uh, is deeply spiritual in nature and yet reveals, I think, in the most prosaic and clearest terms, the kind of world we're going to have to prepare for here on Earth and the reality of this larger arena of intelligent life that we are emerging into. Uh, now, uh, the, the reality, I assume you mean, is that sooner or later there's going to be contact with these outside races and that's going to change the way we feel about ourselves and the way we feel about the universe. Do you have any idea when that might happen? Well, the Earth has been visited. We have records the Earth has been visited periodically over thousands of years, but certainly since the end of World War II, the visitation of the Earth has increased dramatically to such a point that sightings are made regularly all over the world Craft have been seen by presidents, craft have been recorded on radar by military installations around the world. But we're dealing with a worldwide phenomenon that is already underway, that is already present in our lives. And it's a reality that has affected certain people very, very dramatically, people who've had contact, people who have witnessed uh, this visitation or have had direct contact themselves. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, I mean, you do, as you're, you're right, you, you, there are hundreds, thousands, millions of such reports, uh, and often there is, you know, there are blurry photographs to go with it or, for, you know, or accounts from people. If uh, there are alien races who want to make contact with us, why don't they just land in front of the White House where everyone can see them? Well, they're here for their own purposes. They're not here to help us. Ah. They're not here to establish, you know, friendly relations. In fact... The, the reality of this visitation is being demonstrated that they're here acting surreptitiously. They're here really to gain control. They're here to actually they've challenged and threatened our military installation, installation. So we're dealing with a force here that is here for its own purposes. This is a non-human reality we're dealing with now. And we're the native peoples of the world. And history has taught us amply over time what happens to the native peoples of the world when they're dealing with forces that they do not understand. And so we have an opportunity here as the peoples of this world to recognize that we are living within a greater community of intelligent life. And I think in the revelation presented uh, in Life in the Universe and through all, all the other writings of the new message, we, we call it the new message, are teaching us about how we're going to prepare for this. And this is perhaps the greatest event in human history the greatest threshold the human family has ever had to face. I think it is the one great chance for human unity and cooperation in the face of a much greater challenge uh, to our freedom and sovereignty here on Earth. So this has a tremendously positive uh, potential within it, but people need to be informed, people need to become aware, and I think even as we speak, there are many people in all nations who have a connection to this greater community of life, and have a deep and abiding interest in it. Yeah, well, I, 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 I really need you to explain that, Marshall, in a bit more detail, because on, on, and you're, you're saying it's a positive thing, but before that you were saying that there, there are uh, various, I assume various aliens of different races who are here for their own purposes, who may have threatened the military, who are not here to help us. That's scary stuff. Well, it is, but, you know, this is life. Competition is part of life, and we live in a competitive universe, and we are living on a beautiful world, 
that we're rapidly destroying and despoiling. And certainly you can see how this would call other races who have an interest in this world to be present here. So let me just see if I can clarify that your question. I mean, the presence here has very negative connotations for the well-being of humanity. But there's, if we can respond to this appropriately and wisely and not romantically, then we have an opportunity to unite our peoples in facing this great challenge. And I think there is a possibly, and I use the word possibly very carefully, there's possibly a very potentially good outcome for humanity if we can rally and recognize this greater situation that really is facing our world and is happening all over the world. What are they after, Marshall? Our world has valuable resources and strategic value. And when you think of planet Earth as this jewel in the universe amongst countless barren worlds, uh, planets like this may be more common than we previously thought. In fact, science is coming to this conclusion currently. Mm. But nonetheless, I mean, we live in a rare and beautiful world, and uh, it's clearly valued by others, given the nature of the visitation that is occurring today. Uh, but one would be worried, though, that obviously uh, these beings are, are, are te- more technologically advanced than us. They can, they can travel huge distances, uh, and they've, so obviously they've overcome problems that we haven't figured out the answer to yet. Uh, are, are there any races out there who might befriend us, who might be the good guys? Well, there are free races in the universe, but the revelation in life in the universe tells us that freedom is pretty rare in the universe, and uh, technological races tend to be highly controlled, and we're uh, dealing with a situation where we have certain advantages here on Earth. I mean, these beings cannot breathe our atmosphere. They cannot live in our world, so they require human cooperation, and they are are basing their presence here on human acquiescence. And so these are non-military forces that are coming to the world. Mm. That's a very important point to make. I mean, they are seeking to gain influence here without the use of force. Right. So they, they wouldn't, they'd prefer not to have to use force. Well, force destroys the value of the world. So they're, they're intelligent enough to know that the powers of persuasion are far more superior than taking over the world by force, which would set every person in the world against them. So, and, and who are they persuading, Marshall? Oh, leaders of government, commerce, religion, and average citizens who they may take against their will. This is, unfortunately, I hate to bring this up because it's, it's a pretty dark reality, but this is part of what is happening in the world today. The media rarely comments about it. It's going on behind the scenes. Many people know this. Uh, some people hope and believe this is all for our benefit, but I think the facts speak otherwise. Mm. And so I think the purpose of the book and the teachings of life in the universe is to begin to prepare us for the, these realities in a very sober and clear way and to remind us that we have a greater power and strength within us to understand and to deal with these things. I mean, we can't just sit around and succumb to a set of circumstances that we don't want to deal with or that we're unaware of. And so I feel from the divine standpoint, humanity must be prepared for this great threshold. It's Mm. going to happen whether we're ready or not. It's part of evolution. All races Mm. in the universe have to deal with the reality that they're living in an inhabited universe. Marshall, the the, 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 the people who are visiting our world, I mean, are they having sit-downs and face-to-faces with with Vladimir Putin and Barack Obama? I I mean, is is it at that level? Well... It's probably much more subtle than this because they're planting their own individuals in positions of power. And this is, and to Ah. not only be in positions of power, but to advise people in positions of power. Are these human people or are they aliens in disguise type people? I mean, do they look like us anyway, these people? There are some that are like that, yes. Right, okay. Uh, And And that is is part of the, the overall plan of this intervention that is now being revealed, I think, for the first time through... Uh, the teachings and life in the universe, through the new message, and through the work of other people who are studying this phenomenon. Yeah, why don't they take you out, Marshall? Because obviously you're onto them. Uh, aren't you? Aren't you worried? Like they right onto the worried, back of the head, I, you know. I, I feel that I'm safe as long as I can reach enough people that it would be dangerous for them to harm me. Because and why would uh, it be dangerous? You know, it would prove my point. It proves that. Yeah. That but what they, could, they, could, they could maybe try and dismiss you as some sort of nutter or some guy who's just telling lies to flog a few books. That's probably oh, what they do. They try, they, try, they try and smear you, I'd say. 
That's right. It discredit me. But to yeah. destroy me gives me strength, gives my message power. And so, you know, so far, so good. I am challenging something that's, that's very powerful. But I want people to know that we're not dealing with an insurmountable force here. We're not dealing with the power that can overtake us no matter what. And that is clearly not the case. And there's a real case here now for human sovereignty in our world and to recognize that we are the people of this world. This is our planet of origin. We, this is God's gift to us, but we must become wise in managing it, and we must protect it against invasive forces that are coming into our midst. Marshall, thank you very much for speaking with us today. That was Marshall Vian Summer. We're going to take a break. After that, some good things to do tonight. Moncrief on News Talk 106 to 108.